Last conversation this morning here on the show. I want to believe you've enjoyed all the others and, well, continue to keep uh, watching and uh, sending in your messages this morning. We'll be more than glad to read from you. So today here on Entertainment, on a Friday morning, we're taking a look at something that a lot of us as media people, journalists, are actually guilty of, my, including myself. All right, so we're in a space where it looks as if that a certain trend is taking over the main focus of our profession. And sometimes you want to sit back and even analyze it yourself and you feel like you've not done so much when it comes to the profession that you've chosen in terms of uh, the focus, in terms of the branding, in terms of marketing yourself, in terms of brand associations and all of that. And so we want to just explore that conversation a bit and see where we stand and where we're not supposed to stand. I mean, it's not just here in Ghana or Africa. It's a global thing. I mean, you have people in CNN, in BBC, who have lost your jobs because they were not able to see the difference between being a journalist and being a celebrity or a, a social media person, whatever it is. And so we want to take a look at it and see how best we can, you know, backtrack and come back to where we are supposed to. And I'm, I'm starting off with me because I, I am beginning to think that I should be dressing and be looking good more than the job, which is my profession of making sure that I get into certain spaces and bring the ills of society, let people understand what's going on. And sometimes to be a bit too careful, you're wondering, you know, um, will the people even see me come the way I'm coming, you know, or they want to see a different person because you dress anywhere, you go anywhere, anyhow. The next thing they are saying, KMG came here, he was dressing like, you know, he's not a KMG that way we see on TV. So it's difficult trying to balance that. But I've got two gentlemen in the studio who are going to help me, you know, understand that from branding and marketing point of view and from journalistic point of view as well. So Dennis Gawuga is a brand and marketing aspect and he's a family to this family. He's been here before you've seen him. Uh, the last conversation that we had here on the show, he was here with us and uh, he spent some very quality time with us uh, here on uh, Prime Morning. And on the other side, my brother Kofi Che is here with us and he's a journalist, trained investigator and a certified data protection as a supervisor and he's into research as well. So he's joined us here this morning on the show. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. Uh, how is it going? Hey, it's going well. Um, we're happy it's a Friday. Mm -hmm. We love Fridays. Yes, we love Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Kofi, you're good? I'm good. Oh, you are not too good, but you're good. I've had a dramatic week. Yeah. I've not been well. Mm. And then on Monday, I had issues. Oh, In fact, that is not for the platform. Mm. And then just on Wednesday, Thursday, this thing went all over the place. Mm. Uh, but it's okay. Yeah, 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 we're good, we're good. But first of all, so I, I, I want us to start, and I, I want to find out from you, Kofi, have we, as journalists, lost it? when it comes to, uh, you know, making sure that our main focus is just getting the job done and not necessarily making it look like people are supposed to see us as celebrities. And we're doing this devoid of any names or whatever it is. It's not, we are all guilty of it. And I started that, it's, it starts from me and we all have to take responsibility for it. But how have we done, how, about, how have we fared so far? Um, I think the news should come from the journalist. Mm. Um, the journalist should not be the news. Mm. And what we are seeing now is that we have journalists who want to be the news. Mm. And once you want to be the news, then you become the focus, not the substance. That is a challenge we have now. Mm. If you go online and you look at major trending news every week, you are likely to see a journalist in there. Mm. That is not the profession. Um, you are supposed to get lost behind the information mm -hmm. so that people would focus on the information and not even question the credibility of the information. Mm -hmm. Um, but now, I think um, commercialization of the media has also What's contributed because people are so interested in numbers. And also to get the numbers, what it means is that then you must sell yourself to a certain point. Um, that is what has created this problem largely. Um, but I believe that you can be very well known mm. and yet your, your work will be up there with you. What we see now is that um, people use probably the job as a cover-up for their primary interest. So they are not journalists. Most of them are not really interested in journalism. Mm. Their interest is in the um, exposure the profession would give them so that um, they can do some other things. That is where the issue is. But if you are a proper journalist, mm. um, your interest is in the quality of the work you produce. Yeah. That, that is what is missing now because um, people want to sell themselves 
they don't want to sell actual content that benefits their society. Great. We'll, we'll get into why, why we got here. Like you said, you mentioned a few things that uh, the, the, the commercialization that has brought us to this point. I'm, I am thinking that social media has also played a role. We'll get into the other aspect of it. But in terms of, so, I, and because of what you said, I want to start from there. Me, I'm a journalist. I want to be relevant. I have, I say I'm also a brand. Meanwhile, there's something that I'm supposed to focus on. How do I focus on that and still build my own brand so that if I'm out there, people will also see that, oh, this man is relevant. He has a good brand. Okay. So the key um, factor in branding or the key thing in branding is differentiation. I think I mentioned this the last time. Yeah. Um, distinctiveness or distinctivity. So for one to be able to identify one brand from the other, you need, it has to have something that's quite distinctive. Mm. And so for brands in, in this conversation or personal brands in this conversation, you definitely have to be distinctive or different from the other person. Um, I'm, the, the, the space of journalism is quite broad. Mm. You have um, financial journalists, people who are yeah. economic journalists, sports course, journalists. Yeah. You have entertainment, a very journalism. entertainment journalists. So there's a very broad spectrum. And so one would have to ask themselves, what am I passionate about? What drives me? Is that what's going to be my, the fuel for my career journey or my career pathway? Am I crossing too many, um, too many things? You know, I'm, I'm, today I'm this, tomorrow I'm that, tomorrow mm -hmm. I'm that. You need to find one defined um, route to take and then brand yourself as such. We all know um, uh, Kamala Dumont of Blessed, blessed yeah. Memory. Um, he dis distinguished himself as someone who is very passionate about social issues, very passionate about Africa mm -hmm. and Clearly, we all saw his trajectory. Yeah. It started from here, and basically, he, he zoomed off all the way to BBC. So the key important thing with branding is a product. What kind of product are you? What drives you? What's the thing that drives you? And you need to be known for that. Um, I think someone uh, defined personal branding as the conscious, deliberate effort to position oneself as an authority in a particular space, mm and also building credibility for yourself within that space. So all, what are all the various facets that form that personality that you want? If you're going to be an economic reporter, you should live, breathe, eat economics. Mm. When you speak, the room should go silent mm. and people should want to listen to you. And that establishes you as a point of authority so that tomorrow, if you are a Larry King, and Rolex comes to you, then that's an add-on. Mm. It's not the other way around, like my brother just said. You're not putting yourself or putting the cart before the horse, but your credibility basically gives you that weight so that brands like Rolex would want to be. And of course, that is not the ultimate aim anyways, but the thing is about distinguishing yourself and refining yourself. Today, when you talk about um, business on CNN, Richard Quest comes to yeah. mind straight away. Yeah. So to answer your question, it has to be about your passion. What is it that drives you? What is it that you really want to do? And then just stick to it. You'll find your pathway. Okay. We'll look at brand associations with some of the brands you mentioned, the example you gave. If you want to narrow it down to Ghana here, if I'm a journalist or if I'm, if I'm focusing on something, if these brands are coming, the things that I'm supposed to be looking at um, in terms of my association with them, and then you can explain more for us to know. But let, let, let's look at this. So you mentioned why we've gotten to this point. I believe social media and whatever it is that has come to stay has also added a bit to it. But why are journalists believing that if I am getting credible on social media or some sort of attention on social media, that should be a reason enough for me to feel that I have become a certain god of a sort. And so whatever that comes with a job, has to be relegated to the back. Um, you know, once you are so eager to be seen, mm -hmm. the moment you are like, your, your natural inclination is to be seen, um, it affects everything you do. And so we can look at the news. Um, I was listening to a news item. Um, someone is reporting about an eight-year-old raped. And when we went to school, we were trained that when you are reporting about sad incidents, your mood as a journalist, should reflect the incident. Mm -hmm. There has been instances when journalists have shed tears to reflect the mood of the incident, mm -hmm. and they were lauded for that. And this person is describing the rape, 
And the person is trying to use funny words. I mean, Which what's the point? Because to... the person is so eager to compete with the news for attention. So the person has to, um, you know, add makeup, add stuff. But you don't report rape as a funny news. Mm. You see? Mm. And so when you begin to want to compete with the news, that is where the challenge comes. Because, um, you, one, you have a news item. Two, you feel that this news must be presented such that when it goes out to people, I will be seen. But you don't need that. Once you have a quality news item, automatically your identity would go with it without you forcing it. Mm. Kofi, is that not what it seems to be that people want to see? If you put that out there, that's what a lot of people, like you mentioned earlier, the numbers. It, it, it pushes the media houses happy because there are numbers. Yeah, but uh, people, people also want quality news. Mm. And, and quality news must be presented in a way that reflects the emotional um, attachment to the incident. Mm. If someone dies and then you report it with jokes, mm -hmm. you have not reported it well. Okay. Because death is supposed to reflect a sad emotion. Yeah. If someone is raped, you must report to reflect the incident. But if you want to make every news about you, that is how they do it, like try to make the news about you, um, what you are doing is that um, you are depriving the, the victims in the news the quality of attention they deserve. Now, our job is to draw attention to issues so that the issues are resolved. If you make the rape case funny, then you have already weakened the resolve to find justice for the person. Mm. Because at the end of the day, you are making people laugh over the plight of another. And so uh, it has, social media has contributed because at least in the past, we didn't see radio presenters. And we didn't see what they did in the yeah. studios. Now they are in the studios and it is streaming on Facebook. And because of that, um, they feel... You want okay, to pay attention more to let, yourself. Let, 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 let's add something to it. Um, it has not helped, but I think that ethics exist to give us balance. That is the most important thing. We have natural weaknesses that make us want to come out. But when you apply professional ethics, what professional ethics does is that then it tames you mm. so that the job comes to the fore. Mm. And so what people don't do now is that people are not interested in the ethics of their profession. I bet you, if you um, there, there will be a lot of top journalists who have zero idea of most of the ethics of their profession. Mm. That is why they are quick to grab adverts. How can you grab adverts of a product as a journalist? If that product goes bad, now you have promoted the product, automatically your credibility is in question mm. because a lot of consumers purchase that product because of you. you. You see? And so journalists do not have to associate themselves with products. It is an ethical issue, mm. but we see it all over the place. Mm. Why? Because everybody thinks that he is the product. You are not the product. It is the news that is the product. Mm. You are just a vessel for pushing that, pushing uh, that uh, yeah. information. So somebody will also argue, and I'll come back to you for, for you to also try and explain that to us in terms of revenue. Because these things, no two ways about it, add a certain bit of money to the, 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 the accounts of most of these journalists who have endorsements and ambassadorial deals and all of that. We'll look at how to balance it. But brand-wise, marketing-wise, and I'll, I'll start from where he ended as well. Right. If now I'm here and a certain company comes and says that, okay, MJ, we think we're doing well. Uh, you're a good brand. People like you. They respect what you do. So we want to associate with you. Me that I'm sitting here, ethically, I know from where Kofi stands, and yet, <laughs> but me too, I want bank accounts to also go up a bit so that I can, you know, go out there and, and, be, and feel good. Okay. As a brand expert, what am I supposed to be thinking? The company first, myself first, or the profession first? Okay, so I, I think I mentioned in the beginning that um, building a brand is a conscious, conscientious effort. Mm. Um, it build, it's, it's discipline, it's, it's driven by discipline. And so um, if you have a focus in sight, um, the thing, whatever else comes along the way, the thing to ask yourself is how does this contribute to the end goal? Mm -hmm. How does it contribute to my end goal of being this person that I want to be? So. It's a conscious, conscientious effort. You need to, um, you know, 
build. Mm. So you ask yourself, okay, this thing that's coming, I'm looking at the issue of ethics. I'm looking at the issue of the brand that is actually in question. What kind of brand is it? What are their ideals? Mm. What do they stand for? What are their social, or what's their social positioning? Um, all of these things need to be asked. These questions need to be asked. And then you go back to yourself, dial back to yourself and find out if these ideals also tally with your personal ideals of where you want to get to. Um, back to what Kofi also said um, about being the news and, you know, basically yeah, stepping down your standards because the, the, the thing to say is um, don't, don't, play like a, don't play like a local champion. Mm -hmm. You should have the globe as your, your, your oyster, mm. you know, and aim to the top. Just like um, the example I mentioned about Homla yeah. Dumont. He started here, he started local and everything, but at the end of the day, he was such a, a, a quality journalist that someone from outside there, some company from outside there decided, look, you know what, we like you, let's pick you. That's where we should aim, and that's, that's, that's the, the pinnacle. Yeah. So in doing all these associations, et cetera, et cetera, you need to ask yourself, how, how does it work out with me? I don't think um, he did too many um, endorsements. I remember he did, um, there was some... Uh, ash foam or something. Yeah, th something, there wasn't something. too many. Happening. There weren't too many. Yeah. So that, that wasn't the focus, yeah. really. But um, it's a conscious effort mm -hmm. at the end of the day. You need to be very conscious about it. You need to be deliberate about it and be sure that does it work out for my brand? Does it work out for so, me? So the money aspect shouldn't be a conversation. You, you may short circuit <laughs> yourself if, if you focus on the money. Um, at the end of the day, it's a career. If you want money, just pure money, then focus on some other business that should get you money. Of course, the fame will come with some um, exposure that would require that, yeah, these things would, would happen. But the focus shouldn't really be on the money. It should be the career. If it shifts, then the focus has, shifts, mm. has shifted. Sorry. Mm. Yeah, you know, you've shifted the focus to money now. It's no longer your career or your brand as a person. Yeah. Uh, so that, 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 that needs to be properly scoped and defined. Mm. Yeah. Should, should we now then consider that if you're a journalist, automatically you become a celebrity? You have attained a certain social status, and so it makes you go out there and people want to love you, and because of that, you also have to carry yourself like that. <clears throat> Wherever you find yourself, I believe you can be simple and moderate. <laughs> I mean, you don't need to flaunt G1 gone because everyone knows you. Um, the entertainers need that for their brand. Sarkodie needs to show that, yes, his music is fetching him some big money. Mm. Um, KMD doesn't need that. Mm. Because but I'm also... I'm also <laughs> but you see, uh, Sarkodie is not your competitor. Okay. KMD is known. Once you are known all over the place, yeah. uh, technically you are a celebrity. Okay. You don't need to do anything extra. Now, all these influencers, they are all celebrities because they are popular people. We know them. Okay. People, some people look so up to them. So they're legitimately celebrities. Mm -hmm. But some people argue that, I mean, once you have one phone and you become an influencer, you're a celebrity. Once you get, and people even saw them, that these guys are not celebrities. Um, no, no one defines who a celebrity is. So long as a person <laughs> becomes a household name mm -hmm. within a sphere, that, that person is a celebrity. The person doesn't have to sing. The person doesn't have to dance. The person is well known all over the place for mm. doing something. Mm. Um, the, the point is that KMJ is well known. Sarkodie is well known. Should the approach Sarkodie adopts to sell himself be the same approach KMJ adopts? Mm -hmm. No. The difference is that uh, the musician has to show that flashy lifestyle to appeal to his fan base. K K KMJ has to demonstrate a, a certain level of knowledge, knowledge in churning out quality content for his own, for the people who admire him. Mm. And so if Sarkodie shows G-Wagon, and that gives you the pressure to want to show Rose Royce, you are missing it. Okay. Yes, that is not your job. Okay. Because people look up to you for information, and they want to rely on the quality of information you churn out. Once you are consistently able to churn out quality information, and um, you, you are doing well, the revenue would come. Mm. You would be paid well, you would, but then, 
you cannot aspire to be Sakode. Mm. And also, you know, uh, if you can't live moderately, you can't be a journalist, a proper journalist. Yeah. Because uh, you, you would go to somewhere in the uh, Upper West region, and you have to live with the people and understand how the people live so that you can be able to talk about them. And this is you who can only take lunch in Kempiski because that's be where you have raised yourself. That is why a lot of journalists don't travel. They are Accra-based journalists, and they are happy with it because Accra offers the flashy lifestyle mm. they want. But, you know, we are trained to be able to adapt to every situation, and that comes with them um, being moderate. I believe that the media landscape has changed. Yeah. Um, it, ha it has changed considerably with new media mm. and, and all that. But you see, people are living bloggers' lifestyle on mainstream media. And mainstream media sometimes too are competing with even bloggers. There are some content, I don't want to see it on certain media platforms. Yeah. I want them Felix to be talking about them. Mm. And you see them on mainstream major media houses. And so, like, you see, the message across the board, not the individual, even from production point of view. Yeah. Some news items, I don't want to see them here. They are not for, I don't want to mention any media houses. Mm. Uh, it, they are news items for Zion Felix. When we want the serious news, we know where to come to, mm. you see. But now we have practically mixed everything. That is why uh, now the presenters, the newscasters don't know where they fit in mm. because uh, there, there is an unhealthy competition. Yeah. But you see, BBC has remained BBC because they have, stay, they have stayed tuned to their core values. They have not had to change, mm. you see. Mm. But in Ghana, we are mixing it, and that is not helpful. Yeah. That has not been helpful at all. So um, as a journalist, I believe that um, you should just learn to live moderately. You should live such that when you have a dinner with the president, you can show up well. And when you have to live in that village for one week, you can still survive. I think it is very important. That would be a he, lot mentioned of something <laughs> that, he mentioned something that's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed, or I've, I've noticed that we are using labels quite loosely. Um, so celebrity is, is a very different, distinct thing. And a TV personality, a radio personality, um, uh, social media personality, these are very d defined labels um, and d defined titles for defined things. <clears throat> so um, what, 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 who is a celebrity? Mm -hmm. And that's something that we need to proper, properly place, put in place so then people know where they belong yeah. and where they are and know how to play accordingly. So that you are not a journalist who's behaving like a blogger or you're not, a, yeah. you, you understand? So that, that whole mix up but it, it's been difficult it trying to define that because the moment you do, certain people bring certain qualities, and I'm talking about what influentially they've been able to attain on social media, to ask, you know, to compete that they also belong into this status that you are. Yeah. So the news, the news is what uh, should take the front mm. if you're a journalist, like my brother said. Mm. That should be the for, should, should be at the forefront, and um, everything around it should be focused on the news, and you shouldn't really be competing with everybody else in, 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 in this aspect, mm. you understand? But is it wrong to make your brand appealing by living a certain lifestyle which would look like a circle of living that kind of life? Because I have got friends in South Africa, I've got friends in the UK, the US, who will tell you that there are certain personalities or journalists in South Africa who are very rich and they have mansions and everything and they live that life. Even in Nigeria, there are some of them who are very rich, if you see them in their private life, you, you that are sitting here in Ghana that even have, doesn't have one mansion, you open your mouth. That oh, definitely. It's, it's not to say um, don't be rich. Mm -hmm. It's not to say don't um, acquire assets as a journalist, but it's the visuals, the optics, you know, that you put out there that defines, you know, the, this, this, uh, this conversation. Mm. Um, the outlook. It's what, it's what we're talking about. Uh, if you're talking about um, being a credible journalist within a certain space, then what you want to project is your knowledge, 
your your your, your the, the the amount of power you have over what over that particular area, the subject area. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's so for instance, your social media platforms should be more of your job than more of your personal lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. If if that's your career, then that should be it. I I went to TikTok, and for some reason, I was struggling to understand what people happened? people were complaining about that hey, TikTok is this TikTok. I actually follow newscasters on TikTok and what they do actually with social media which is new media now is break down topics create sub discussion groups mm. on major topics that have been running on major platforms mm. and so it it's a more um, a breakdown version of what you find on mainstream media and these are all facets that build, still end up building your brand as a journalist mm. so what channels are you using to propagate your brand like i said it's an intentional process so all the various channels that are available to you how are you using them to propagate your your, your personal brand as a journalist, as your personal life is also a different thing altogether. Mm. You could have the Rolls Royce and all of that, but then once you are a practicing journalist in a particular field, be it golf, be it economics, be it business, be it fashion, how are you using all these channels to build up your career as a journalist within that particular space? Mm. That's the question all we need to ask. Very well. If you just join us here on the show, this is Prime Morning, and this is the entertainment segment that we're taking a look at the um, profession journalism, uh, the standards, and uh, uh, the penchant for celebrity status or you know uh, lifestyles, if you want. And so you can send your messages. Uh, let us know what you think about it. Uh, share your thoughts with us. If you have got a typical examples you want to share with us as well, you can also share those examples with us. But uh, for me, I think that we're all guilty looking at what, where we are right now. But um, Kofi, how do we get back to basics? I know it's going to be difficult because <clears throat> now media houses are also playing a certain role in it because I feel that some of the, you know, um, monies that are being paid to these people is a problem, first of all. And also, people want to be relevant just so they're able to be sustained by the media house and all that. How do we balance this? And okay, so, um, you know, um, I think you mentioned the money aspect. Yeah. Obviously, the money you are paid will not be enough for you to live the lifestyle you portray. Mm. And once you are desperate to show a certain class of lifestyle, that is what leads you to associate with <clears throat> certain people you need not associate with. Because um, the job itself won't pay you so much. Yeah. It would pay you enough so that you don't die. <laughs> but it won't pay you to <laughs> compete with the, with the, with the, I mean, the, the, the red guys. Um, nothing stops a journalist from having an alternative means of livelihood. No one is saying that don't create wealth outside the profession. Mm. You can be extremely rich as a journalist because of your industry. That is not a problem. Mm. The, 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 the problem is that don't create a public outlook that, 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 that makes you look like um, a, a mainstream celebrity. Mm. You, have, you may have all the cars we are talking about here. You don't need to showcase them every day mm. because uh, you, you want to be seen as what? As a source of quality information. And you don't want your image to conflict with that. We are not also saying that you should hide. Um, I mean, in the past, look, we think social media has made people popular. Um, the Akusika and Co, they were extremely popular. Mm. Because Give to your auntie. in the past, when you, you are on GTV, everyone in Ghana is watching you. Mm. Today, you, you would be on Joy Prime, Joy Prime, someone is watching Joy News. Mm -hmm. And so wh when you look at the number of media houses, you probably are, you are reaching less than 10% of the population. When Lord Kenya produced this hit song in 2001, one day, two days, it was all over the country because the media houses were not many. Mm. And so um, it was easy for you to be known all over the place just by one appearance on TV. As we are here, we may be here, a lot of people will not be watching. Yeah. Some are watching because they may be elsewhere. Yeah. And so it's not that social media has exposed us over the top. It has only given us options to ensure that people who don't even have content are seen. Mm. And so it has given platform 
to quality and quantity. That is the challenge we have now. But a journalist can stand out. I mean, a proper journalist, you can stand out. I mean, Manasseh Azuri stands out. He is a journalist. He has, um, he's, he's on social media. He is very active. But his work speaks for him. I'm not saying everyone should be Manasi. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that we all have content. We all have something quality to feed the nation. Because, you see, uh, we are getting to the point where we are compromising on quality. And the way back is extremely difficult. Because, you see, when uh, money and fame comes to the fore of everything, um, no one wants to lose it. You, you want your numbers to drop now. Mm -hmm. Because that is where you have built yourself to. And if you have built a brand side that every week you have to change your outfit, hmm. now it's difficult for you to yeah. ch change it now. And so um, in terms of returning to basics, for me it is difficult because the whole media landscape has changed. But I think that um, individual journalists should just strive to place quality the quality of their work above everything else. We may not have it like it was in the past. Even the BBCs are relaxing in certain aspects of it. Mm. But I still think that we can still have very credible journalists who don't necessarily have to be everywhere. There is a party and the, the journalist is there not to cover fun, dance. You can go to your party. You don't have to be in the pictures. Mm. You don't have to be in the videos because that is not the um, image you want for your brand. Mm. You see, that, mm. that is all we are talking about. We are not saying that live like... Be uh, stay for you. No. <clears throat> Enjoy your life, but know when to be private and know what to bring public. I think when we get this balance, um, we'll be fine. We'll be good. Okay, so there's this one that I want to ask the two of you and then um, I see how we, we can go about it. So, I'm a journalist. I get an invitation by a certain minister, president, if you want, or some big man, to come and interview the person. The person sends a private jet to pick me up, and I make videos or pictures of me in the private jet that, oh, I've been invited by so and so uh, to come and do this thing. I'm in a private jet. They brought a private jet to pick me up and all of that. I put it on social media. Am I, am I doing well or I'm, I'm doing bad? In terms of. <laughs> in terms of <laughs> What you have told me is that um, indirectly you have been compromised. Really? You know why? Okay. Um, um, you have sent a signal to the viewers yeah. that the, the person who is hosting you has, 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 has given you so good a treat and you are so excited. Um, now, there are some questions you might not be able to ask. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. And even the, the point of being credible is that even if you ask the right question, um, when people doubt you, they will find reasons to downplay the quality of the question. Because they know that, oh, the person you are going to, let's say this, this person is, um, is being accused of mm -hmm. corruption. Maybe a known baron, exactly. drug dealer, whatever. And then he gives you this treat. And you have also shown the rest of the world that, oh, he picked me up in a private jail. Look at me, like, you are showing the world, like, it's nice. But at the end of the day, you have put yourself in a position where viewers will begin to question, you are a friend, and you are not supposed to be a friend. Mm. Um, he has given you the kind of treat that, has, that would likely soften your resolve in your dealing with this person. So... Okay, you pick the private jet. You don't need to put it out there. I mean, wh why do you put it out there in the first place? So that everyone would know that you, you, you are in a private jet. <laughs> yeah, there's a recent um, American journalist, Tucker Carlson, who yeah. recently um, interviewed Putin. Putin, yeah. And I'm sure in traveling to, Amer um, to, to Russia, um, Putin would... Of course, Putin at that point also wanted to be heard. Mm -hmm. he, he, the whole world basically has a certain perception about him. So he definitely would extend some courtesies to yeah. Carlson. I wouldn't know that, but it's, it's logical to assume that in coming in, he'll be protected because yeah. clearly some other parties wouldn't want Tucker Carlson yeah. to have that. But you, you don't see any of those behind the scenes. You don't see any of those things out there. And I'm also shocked because I also followed that yes. um, Carlson and Putin thing. 
And for me, from where council is coming from, from the Fox issues to, uh, you know, being on his own on Twitter and all of that, I was hoping that all these things that, you know, could probably be given to him, he would have come to say them and all of that. But I never read about anything. All I read was that he was in So Russia. clearly, the standard is set. And you can see that the standard... <laughs> but is, well, is why is that over. difficult? If he, was, yeah. why is he, if he was to have done that, immediately then people will start questioning the question. The content of what he's going mm. to ask. Yeah, so, it, it compromises. Um, you, you don't want yeah. to do that. Mm. Uh, when, when, when you are going to do... So there could also be the fact that he was given all of that. No, this, definitely. This, this, I mean, it could be. Definitely. But it's not the same, it's this not the is, same thing we're talking about. One, one showed as the other one kept it silent. Th these interviews are PR interviews. If Putin accepts that you should interview him, he knows that he, he, he wants to sell himself in a positive way. And so um, he, he, he would want to... Um, satisfy the person who is coming to interview him. Yeah. So obviously he would make all the provisions needed for the interviewer to be comfortable. But then um, at every point in time, don't sacrifice um, your, your professionalism. Ethics, yes. And, and when you are excited, when you think, you feel so grateful, hey, this is me in a private jet. I mean, I it's mean, just uh, you being. So, 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 <laughs> At the end of the day, how can you ask the relevant questions? And even if you are to ask the relevant questions, the viewers, you see, you have put them in a position where they will begin to question whether you have been compromised or not. Yeah, the optics. You mm. want to clear doubt. Yeah. Mm. Yes. That is your interest. The interest is to clear doubt and increase believability. We all have our biases. What professional ethics seeks to do is to ensure that we bury and hide those biases. Because I think um, the, this broadcast journalism, it's one thing that I've always kept. Andrews Boyd, BBC, yeah. I think broadcast journalism, he said, um, no one can be free from bias because we all have um, personal weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And he said, for objectivity, subjectively appraised, is by itself not a reliable yardstick. Which means that at your honest best, mm. there is still a that certain element of bias in it. So it is natural. But professional ethics um, seeks to streamline us so that even when we fall off, we don't fall too far from standards. So that is what we have to focus on. Mm. And I think... So it takes, it takes us back to, to the definition I gave. Yeah. It's a conscientious, def, uh, you know, deliberate effort mm. but, but to then build it's, credibility. It's a difficult thing to do. You have followed... The, the media escaped for a while. You've right. followed other businesses and how they operate and all that. You've seen businesses come and have brand issues. You've seen businesses come and have marketing issues. Now, the little you can do for yourself is when you see a little space you can occupy and be relevant, you want to take advantage of that. That also may be you compromising a certain other thing or whatever it is that may affect you in the future. This is difficult to do. How do we make it so simple? In, in all fairness, as well, um, we have to consider our landscapers as well. I mean, these examples I've given is it, it, in a system that uh, is, it works and, and mm -hmm. it's very, very, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, discipline-based. Mm. So you can have someone who can literally thrive on being a sports journalist through and through and not do anything else. And be very And fine. be fine. Here, um, we have little crossovers. You might have to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But at the end of the day, like Kofi mentioned, all of these are governed by ethics. And these ethics should guide you as you go along. Um, opportunities, a plethora of opportunities would appear. Because like we have here, once you appear on, on a, any social media platform or, or, any, or on any media platform for a few times, you're considered a celebrity <laughs> or considered a person. This issue, of, uh, yeah, so I, I use that word advisedly. <laughs> But and so yes, all these opportunities will come. Brands will want to leverage on the numbers you carry, mm. et cetera, et cetera. But the thing you need to do once again is dial back. Who am I? What do I want to achieve? Would this help me achieve what I want to achieve? Um, how would that define my personality? You know. So all of these questions you need to ask yourself whilst you do it. Otherwise, and if I'm going to compromise, then then compromise yourself fully. Mm -hmm. So then people know that you. When you say this tomorrow, it can be doubted. When you say this. This other some, something will happen and throw a lot of spanners in what you're saying. Then, what's your purpose of being a journalist at the end of the day if your word doesn't carry weight? You know, so all of these things that come, you need to weigh and measure them and see how is this going to help 
my credibility as a journalist at the end of the day. Will it help? Will it not help? There was something that I wanted quickly to touch on, on the fact that um, the demand coming from people is pushing the media houses to go a certain direction. But um, is it the fourth estate of the realm, journalism? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's what. Yes. So that position is a very, very powerful one and has to be used, you know, sensibly, really. If you, the, we, the, the, the journalists are responsible for shaping perceptions, shaping society, society and everything, then we should be very responsible in what we feed the people so that it's a conscious effort at getting our society to move from point A to point B or else we'll just be all swimming in the quagmire and then just eating from the same mud that we are in. But we need to lift ourselves from this point to the next point. You know, societies, media has shaped societies mm. in Europe, in Asia, and therefore that's why Asia, some Asian countries are very strict on how media is used, mm. you know. So ethics, the, 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 the building of personal brands and all of these things should also go hand in hand in defining our media landscape, defining media personalities, and you know, distinguishing between um, celebrities <laughs> and distinguishing between TV stars, uh, uh, TV, TV personalities, newscasters, journalists, anchors, all of these things have to be defined properly. Mm. Kofi, so, so, yeah, yeah. Then one, one, you know, uh, one professional journalist I admire, mm. Kojo Ponkroma. I own Kojo, Kojo, Kojo Ponkroma. When Kodo Pongkroma was here, yeah. I don't think he became MPP the day he picked forms. Mm -hmm. He was probably MPP before, yeah. but he was he able to well. be very balanced yeah. that people did not even yeah. suspect it. Yeah. He had his biases, but he was able to let ethics guide him. Mm. When he decided to go into politics, he resigned, and then he went into politics. For me, that's a very honest person. Mm. You may have disagreement with him, with his politics or whatever, but when he was a journalist, he was a consummate professional. Mm. And when he decided to move on, he moved on well. Now we have, they are journalists, they are politicians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some even accepting appointments. That, that is like completely wrong, mm. you see. So um, Kodo Apokroma is a very good example of being biased and managing it with professionalism. That, that is like, if we want a good example, for me, that is that. Mm. He had his bias, but he was able to let ethics guide him so that his bias is not um, exposed. And so he was, no one accused him of um, being uh, an MPP yeah. person in the studios. He was a proper journalist. And when he decided to come out as a journalist, he resigned to do politics. And I think he has been a, um, I mean, a good politician. He has represented journalists well. Yeah. And so you can have all these um, personal weaknesses and all that, but uh, ethics is a good guide for all of us. Very well. Mm. Uh, we, 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 we're ending our conversation right now. And, but before that, uh, let me let you know that we'll be crossing over uh, to the semifinals of the 2024 Inter Reading Quiz, which is about to actually get underway at the University of Ghana campus. Uh, there are four schools, uh, Prospect International School, Golden Angels School, and uh, Start Tried School. We have uh, Thoreau's School, who will be battling uh, it out for the two slots of the grand finale. Now, uh, we'll be crossing over once again to the Ligon Interdenominational Church at the University of Ghana campus for the first in series of the, the semi-final contest. But gentlemen, let me say a big thank you. I know it's, it looks scary. Uh, it sounds very disturbing, uh, how, how we see things and how things are going right now. But I also believe that we journalists have our own issues and we may get better, uh, you know, in the coming... We only hope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear what Kofi will say. If you are saying we hope, I don't know. Uh, um, I mean, for me, I would say it is, this is where we find ourselves. Um, this is where we find ourselves. I think that um, individuals can decide. You get okay. it. Pe personally, I was active journalist. When I realized that I am so strongly opinionated, I decided to stop. Okay. Because I can't present the news with my opinion. So now I have 
a lot of opinions. <laughs> <laughs> no one can hold me. You know what I mean. <laughs> so. Anyway, but that's good. Uh, that is Gaoga, is a brand marketing expert, Kofiche, as a trained journalist and also a certified and uh, a data protection supervisor. Joining us this morning over here, he's a journalist as well. A very good one for that matter. Gentlemen, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it. So we're crossing over right now.